Alright guys, my name is Metagoblin, and today I'm going to be giving you a detailed poison guide for the rogue class in Classic WoW. In this video, I'm going to go through each and every single poison type, talking about them quite extensively, talking about their usefulness in PvP and PvE environments, and then we'll be talking about, you know, what are the best poisons to go for, and which poisons you can probably not going to be using that much because other poisons are simply stronger. But just before we jump in guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch if you want to catch any of my live streams. And if you end up liking the video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because that really does help out. So I'm going to talk about this topic in as much detail as possible, but if you guys feel like I've missed something, do feel free to leave a contribution in the comments section below. And for anyone watching this video really, I would recommend reading the comments as much as you can because you might pick up a tip now and again because the community that watches my videos always leave really good comments, so I would recommend doing that. So to cover my first tip when it comes to poisons, we're at the class trainer here today. As you can see, I can still learn lower rank versions of the, of the poisons that I already have learned. So as a tip, you do not need to buy all the lower ranked poisons, you can just buy the max rank ones and that will save you obviously a lot of money. So that's the first tip, but let's actually jump in and start talking about these poisons. So I'm going to talk about the least talked about uh, poisons first before I jump into the ones that like most people already know about. So first of all, let's talk about mind-numbing poison. So, coat a weapon with poison that lasts 30 minutes. Each strike has a 20% chance of poisoning the enemy, increasing their casting time by 60% for 15 seconds. So this is a ridiculously powerful poison when you're against casters and healers in a PvP environment. But obviously it's also very useful against difficult casting enemies in the open world. So the reason why this poison is so ridiculously useful is because it's basically going to increase the casting time of enemy players, which means it's going to take them longer to get their casts off. You know, particularly casts like Fear, which can be absolutely detrim detrimental when you're fighting a, a wall. Because if, if a wall gets you into Fear, it can nearly be basically game over. So it makes it easier for you to actually get interrupts and to get your kick in. So generally, it just applies a massive amount of pressure against enemy casters, less so on enemy healers, because obviously healers can remove poisons, which is really irritating. But um, this one is really useful when you're against, like, mages and warlocks, because it'll really pin them down and put them under a lot of pressure. You will be better putting this poison on a really fast offhand weapon. The reason why putting poisons on faster weapons is generally the better way to go is because, well, first of all, Poison proc rate is actually normalized, so a slow weapons have an increased chance to proc the proc poisons, and slow weapons, faster weapons have a reduced chance to, to apply poison. So over the course of like two minutes of hitting a target, the poison application will be exactly the same. However, in obviously in PvP, you aren't on the target 100% of the time. Okay, you're going to be in and out of melee range, which is why you want to fit as many melee swings as possible in a short space of time that you're going to be in melee range, particularly on a ranged you know enemy to increase the chance of you actually getting that poison off. So that's why generally faster weapons are better, it's why faster pets are better, you know, for the hunter and stuff like that. So keeping this poison on an enemy player is going to be absolutely lethal. I'd recommend using it basically whenever you're against casters or healers. Obviously you don't really need to use this, in fact you don't need to use it at all against melee DPS. You, we will talk about different poisons to apply when you're going against melee DPS. But for now let's move on to the next poison. So the next poison we're going to be talking about was Wound Poison. So enemy strike has a 30% chance of poisoning the enemy, reducing all healing effects used on them by 135 for 15 seconds, stacks up to 5 times on a single target. So at first glance this poison looks like it can be really really useful against healer enemies. The issue is that healers can remove poisons very very effectively, they have a number of abilities to remove poisons, and shamans even have a totem which will pulse off all of your poisons very very quickly. So you're never going to stack this fully, and to be honest with target will probably die before you've stacked it up that high anyway. So to get full use out of this, you would have to be going against an enemy that is not healing. So DPS targets, which you know for a fact will heal, for instance a warlock, warlock will heal, they use drain life, all that kind of thing. Then Wound Poison could possibly see a little bit of usefulness going against a Warlock or any other classes that can heal themselves without removing poisons. But apart from that, it doesn't. it's not that particularly uh, useful. I'm not saying this poison is entirely really bad and you should never use it. The issue is I just feel that mind-numbing poison is way more useful at re you know reducing the amount of healing on the enemy target because you can just to have a higher chance of getting your kicks in, they're going to be casting less, so I generally just find my Numbing Poison to be a lot more useful 
than wound poison. And obviously you can only really have two poisons on at once, and you always want to be putting crippling poison on your main hand generally, so yeah. I just want to make a little point about wound poison. It is very useful in stealth opening. So, for instance, if you're opening up from stealth and chain stunning a enemy healer, you will have a chance to stack that poison pretty high and kind of nerf his healing, and then it will take him a while to kind of debuff all of the poison effects that have racked up on him. So, that's the only time I can see it becoming really, really useful is when you're in a stealth opener and you're doing a chain stun stealth opener. But overall, it's just not that great. Oh no, I heard you say something. He said you're not that great. So the next poison we're going to be talking about is Crippling Poison. Each strike has a 30% chance of poisoning the enemy, slowing their movement speed for seven, by 70% for 12 seconds. So I'm pretty sure, 99% sure, that this is literally the best slow effect in the game. This will literally totally remove, um, what is it called, chill effects or frostbolt slow effects from a mage because it is so powerful. Um, they will basically... What happens if, if you apply Crippling Poison when a mage already has their debuffs on, it will just totally remove them because Crippling Poison is such a ridiculously useful slow effect. There are a number of ways you can use Crippling Poison. Obviously using it in PvP is ridiculously useful. Um, chasing down ranged enemies, healers, uh, pinning just generally pinning people down, optimizing your stealth openers. Even like kiting, you can kite warriors, shamans and other rogues with Crippling Poison, which is uh, really beneficial. And... Obviously you can also kite uh, PvE enemies out on the open world to really optimise gouge kiting. We're going to make a video about gouge kiting soon, but um, you can use Crippling Poison to very effectively kite mobs. And then like when you're kiting away using gouge or just generally just kiting, waiting for your energy to restore, dipping it in a combo to, you, to um, stack up combo points for a kidney shot to just... Very useful poison basically when you're going against difficult elite enemies. It's very easy to solo elite enemies as a rogue, you just have to be smart how you use Crippling Poison and Gouge. You are basically going to use Crippling Poison on your main hand 100% of the time in PvP because it's so ridiculously useful. The only scenario that I can think of it not being used is if you're working very closely with a mage in World PvP or Battlegrounds or something and you could benefit from the major slows which are obviously harder to dispel than, you know, poison effects. And therefore you can benefit from two different types of poisons that you want to apply on each of your weapon. Last tip I'd recommend is never putting Crippling Poison on both of your weapons, even though it will increase the proc chance of it occurring and, uh, you know, the chance of you getting that slow. The thing is you never want to put, basically in PvP, you never want to put the same poison on both of your weapons because when, um, obviously it'll increase the chance of that poison being applied on the target, but it will there'll only be one debuff, one poison debuff on the target, and that, you know, that'll very easily get removed. So, you'll have increased chance to apply the poison, but an increased chance for those poisons to be removed. So I always apply two, two different poisons, so it takes like two global cooldowns for a healer to actually remove his poisons, which in, in which, you know, two global cooldowns, you can kill someone and do two global cooldowns, you can do a lot of pressure and damage in two global cooldowns, and he will probably have to cast a heal, which means it's basically you will have better poison uptime if you use two different poisons all the time. So, the last two poisons we're going to talk about are Deadly Poison and Insta Poison. Let's talk about Deadly Poison first. I think Deadly Poison gets a lot of stick and it's not really needed because Deadly Poison does have a very, uh, a number of very useful, useful... Uh, let's try that one again. Deadly Poison has a number of different uses in PvP and PvE environments. So first of all, in PvP you can use Deadly Poison very effectively to kite targets. So, this is a really good way to deal with warriors. If you can kite a warrior with Crippling Poison and stay in his dead range where he can't charge you, you can literally just keep kiting him, dipping out of combat to apply Deadly Poison and uh, Rupture and stuff like that, and stuns, and you can basically just kite warriors down and rot them down with your dots. I used to do it a lot as a Death Knight as well. It's very easy to do. You just stay in that dead zone where they can't charge you, and you can use Exploit, Deadly Poison and Rupture to basically just slowly rot them down. It's very useful. Um, you can also use it in, a, in the opposite way. If you feel like you're getting kited loads by a target and, you know, it's a target that doesn't really heal that much, you can, you know, against like a ranged target, you can use it because while you're out of melee range, Deadly Poison is going to continuously rot the target down. So, yeah, it's actually more useful than you think. When it comes to PvE, a lot of people basically hate on it because it's going to take up a debuff slot and overall reduce raid damage, which is fair enough. Weirdly, if you actually were allowed to use Deadly Poison, um, you would basically end up doing more damage than you would do with instant poisons on your weapon. So the only real time you can use Deadly Poison, particularly when you get Deadly Poison 5 from the Runes of Anchorage, you can use it in 20-man raiding. Um, 
you know, in Zulga Rope, so, yeah, Zulga Rope, you can use it in Ruins of Anchorage and Upper Black Rock Spire, stuff like that. Upper Black Rock Spire bosses don't last that long anyway. So you can use it in 20 man raiding very usefully, but be mindful of bosses having poison resistance. I'm pretty sure a lot of bosses in Zul Zulga Rope have poison resistance and Ruins don't have Anchorage now that I meant to uh, think about it. So that's something to bear in mind. However, there is a very niche use for Deadly Poison, which I've kind of kind of coined myself to actually use it on Anixia. So obviously Anixia in phase two, the flight phase, she goes into the air and the only way to take it down is by range DPS. And what I always find when what what of a red group I'm in when it comes to taking down Anixia is there aren't enough dots on Anixia. The reason why dots are so useful for taking down Anixia is because basically it allows you to continue to do DPS while you're avoiding her mechanics, while you're avoiding the fireball and the breath mechanic. So, yeah, and not, not I always I barely see like warlocks like absolutely stacking up their dots. So what I do is I stack my own dots. Weirdly, on Anixia boss fights, um, on the Anixia boss fight, you can actually still continue to do melee damage in Voshes in the air. You just got to be intelligent about how you do it. You basically go right under her like her belly and you keep jumping and when you jump you can you for somehow you actually get into melee range so you can actually continue to do melee damage on Nyx here during our flight phase and what I like to do if I feel like the whelps have been dealt with or if I feel like the war the warlocks and like slacking and not doing enough dots to um and applying enough pressure to Anixia, what I'll do is I go up to Anixia, I do loads of jumping and I apply as much uh, deadly poison and combo points as I can and I use rupture and yeah, Rupture and Deadly Poison to stack loads of dots, and then when I need to run away, I sprint and run away to avoid Breath Mechanic, and while I'm running away, I'm still continuing to do a lot of damage and pressure to Anixia to get her into the ground phase faster. So yeah, to, to obviously, like, the main thing that wipes people on Anixia generally is the Breath Mechanic, so the, the shorter time period that you're in that phase is actually really useful, so it would actually be quite useful if all rogues did this, to be honest, and, like, warriors dealt with the uh, whelps instead. But anyway, that's just like a very niche useful uh, usefulness for Deadly Poison that I've kind of come up with, and I do feel like it is very useful because, it, like again, not enough people, nowhere near enough people use dots on Anixia. But if you see if you see people in your raid group applying dots to Anixia, then fair enough, you might not need to do that, and you should probably focus the whelps instead. But nonetheless, it is a cheeky way to absolutely soar um, really, really, really far on the DPS meters. So that's always funny to do. But anyway, let's talk about the last poison, which is Instant Poison. So last poison is instant poison, and each strike has a 20% chance of poisoning the enemy, which instantly inflicts 112 to 149 nature damage. So this is the go-to poison for when it comes to raiding, because it doesn't take a deal with slot and it will increase your DPS. Elementals and stuff like that are immune to it, so it doesn't see that much use in Molten Core. Well, it does it does a little bit when you're against the humanoids, but irritatingly, some mobs in Molten Core are immune to it. But yeah, this is just like a flat-out... 5% roughly DPS increase, maybe even 10% to be honest, uh, depending on how the fight goes. So yeah, you, you normally apply this to both weapons and that's what you do. If you're playing Horde and you're in the Wind Fury group, you know, if you're in a group of a Shaman, then get Instant Poison off your main hand so that Wind Fury can buff your main hand weapon and just put it this on your off hand. Otherwise you will be massively nerfing your DPS because Wind Fury Totem is way better than any poison. So yeah. Last thing I'm going to talk about is when it comes to leveling. Generally when you're leveling, again, you are just going to apply instant poison on both your weapons and that's it. That's what I did. Um, but I would recommend getting crippling poison uh, and ranking that up because crippling poison is extremely useful when you're against enemies that run away. A lot of enemies run away in fear and they'll run and go and pull more mobs, which is extremely irritating. So what I'd recommend you to do is uh, obviously just quickly swap, onto a, swap a crippling poison on your main hand and then, like, when enemies go into, um, like, their fear effect, you can probably finish them off before they run into more mobs. You might also want to go for mind-numbing poison. You may consider ranking that up if you have the money to do it, because, again, when you're against caster mobs, you can increase their cast time, which really helps out a lot. It makes it easier to fit your kicks in and stuff like that. It may, you may even be against some healer. Like, we've mentioned before that there are some enemies in the game which heal themselves and uh, you know wound poison can have, be quite useful for that but generally it is better to just kick the heals so I don't think wound poison again is that incredibly that useful unless we are stealth opening onto a onto a healer you may also want to use instant poison on both your weapons in a PvP scenario if you're trying to really optimize the DPS in your stealth opener, again, if you feel confident you're going to keep your target in a stun for the entirety of your stealth opener and you're going to kill this target in entirely from stealth in a one single, well, two stuns, 
uh, then yeah, maybe you want to go for instant poison to secure the kill, which is fair enough. But apart from that, you know, you do want to be using crippling poison pretty much all of the time when it comes to PvP. But anyway guys, I think I've talked on long enough. That's where I'm going to end the video. My name is Metagoblin, until the next video, ciao.